Hey everybody, uh, this is Mr. Math Blog. This uh, lesson is Understanding Volume. So here's our, our common core strand for our most grooviest teachers out there. So, um, uh, And then our question here is how can we use unit cubes uh, to find the volume of rectangular prisms? Okay, And so um, uh, the common core strand it says right here, it says geometric measurement uh, understanding concepts as volume and how that relates to multiplication and addition. I'll show you all of that in this in this lesson here. All right, let's get started, you guys. Okay, so we can find the volume of a rectangular prism by counting what's called the unit cubes. Okay, so we'll talk more about that in just a second. So volume is the measurement of the amount of space a solid figure occupies. Like for example. I'm drinking some coffee right here, and so how much volume of coffee can be in this cup right here? That's a, volume is in terms of liquid, or let's say gas, um, gas like in a in a balloon or something, or even in a in a gas tank, uh, that would be liquid. Um, uh, or sand, how much sand can you fill up a space? Those are all kind of volume sort of things. Okay, so it's measured. Uh, volume is always measured in cubic units. Um, and we'll talk more about that later, probably not till you get into high school, but cubic units just means um, uh, like feet cubed or inches cubed or centimeters cubed or whatever your measurement is, okay? So each unit cube has a volume of one, whoops, there's, I got one too many L's there, has a volume of one cubic um, uh, unit right there. All right, you're going to see a misspelling here for, for a bit. All right, so here's a rectangular prism above made up of how many unit cubes? So what we can do is, um, what's, what happened to my little pointer? Let me grab this guy right here. What we can do is uh, is just count them, you guys. And so, so what I did is I'm going to split this thing up right here so it looks just like this right here. Okay, and we can just count them. Okay, so it's like if we took a, a knife and went and cut it right down there, we'd get the top half and the bottom half. And so these are cubes right here. So how many of them are here? There's four here. There's four more there. So there's uh, eight of them. So it's made up of eight unit cubes. So the volume is going to be uh, eight cubic units, okay? Depending on the units, again, they could be in meters, centimeters, inches, feet, miles, uh, kilometers, whatever they're talking about right there, okay? All right, so let's just move that up right there. Now I'm just gonna I'm gonna focus on just this guy for a second. So let's take this stuff out right here, okay? All right, so note the dimensions of the rectangular solid above and how it relates to its volume, okay? So the volume is eight cubic units. Notice this is four and two, and this is one high right there, okay? Just one one side of a square high right there. All right, and what, what I'd like you to recognize is, and they don't want you to recognize until the next lesson, is volume is length times width times height. Four times two is eight. Eight times one is eight. So the dimensions above are just going to be four times two times one or eight. And remember, volume is always cubic units. Uh, anything with area is uh, square units. Volume is cubic units. Otherwise, if it's just in units, then whatever, centimeters, inches, all that stuff. So, Okay, so in a rectangular prism, you guys, the volume is always length times width times height. Okay, and again, cubic units. Okay, all right, so if we had a rectangular prism that had a length of five units, a width of three units, and a height of two units, how many cubes would we need for each layer? Okay, this is kind of a compounded question here. And then again, it says how many how many unit cubes would need to be filled the whole rectangular prism? Okay, so here it is right here, five by three by by two. Okay, so it's it's five units long, it's three units wide, and two units up. All right, what I'm going to do is separate these guys. I'm just going to pull that guy up right there. So let's do that. And so what happens is, is each one becomes five by three by one, five by three by one. So let's answer this first uh, question right here. How many cubes would each layer need right there? Okay, so each layer would be five times three times one. Or what we can do is just go five here, five more, so five and then five is 10, and then five more right here is 15. So um, let's answer their questions here. So each layer would need 15 cubes. And the whole prism would need, okay, well, so it's 15 for this one, it's 15 for this one. So 15 plus 15 is gonna give us 30 right there, okay? All right, let's put them back together here. Okay, and then uh, let's see, what else? Okay, so notice um, uh, right here, 
5 times 3 times 2 is 30. Okay, now 5 times 3 is 15. 15 times 2 is, is 30. Or what we could do is do, um, it's called the commutative property of uh, multiplication. Like when I drive to work, I commute to work in my truck. So I'm commuting these guys next to each other through the multiplication symbol. So I'm doing 5 times 2 first. 5 times 2 is 10, and then 10 times 3 is 30. Okay, so um, it's kind of a little number theory game right here. You can play with the numbers and find out the ones that are nice and matching numbers. 5 and 2 gives me 10. 10 is a nice compatible number to multiply with. 10 times 3 is 30 right there. Okay, all right. So that's what I do anyway. So describe the relationship among the number of cubes needed to fill each layer, the number of layers, and the volume. Okay, all right. So we talked about that. So the number of cubes to fill each layer was uh, length times width. Okay, so it's what's the relationship right here? So remember, it was um, uh, for each layer. It was it was sorry, um, it was uh, right here. Um, whoops, let me go back here. This was this was one unit right here. So uh, one unit. Whoops, I did it wrong. Darn it. I'm gonna do that. Okay, this was uh, sorry, uh, one unit. Uh, high, not two units, okay, so when we split them up, that's one unit right there, okay, so um, uh, we know that this is five, so this is five, that's three, so that's three, so five times three would have given us this layer right here, five times three was 15 right there, so the volume is going to be uh, five times three times the, the two, and we put it back together, if I put this guy back down on top right there, Okay, and then we have 5 times 3 times uh, 2 gives us that 30, okay, length times width times height, okay, that gave us the volume. So which has a greater volume? So 1 cubic centimeter or 1 cubic inch, and explain, okay. So if you don't know the difference between a, uh, a centimeter and an inch, maybe if you have uh, some rulers in class um, or some kind of measuring sticks in class, here's the difference between a centimeter and a meter, okay. I'm sorry, a centimeter and, and an inch. An inch is about that long right there, and compared to a centimeter, which is only that long. Can you see this centimeter is much shorter than this inch? In fact, in fact, one inch equals 2.54 centimeters, okay? Or each centimeter is 0.3937 is of an inch right there. So clearly the centimeter is smaller than the than the in, inch. So so since an inch is longer than the centimeter, a cubic, uh, a cubic inch is going to be greater than a cubic centimeter right there. All right. So let's find the volume of the prism. Uh, if each cube represents one cubic centimeter, one cubic inch, and one cubic foot. Okay, so the math is the same on all of them. It just depends on if they're going to be cubic centimeters or cubic inches or cubic feet. We're still going to multiply length times width times height. So let's go ahead and do that right there, okay? So 3 times 6 times 2, all right, is 36, okay? So what, what you can do, I like doing this, 3 times 2 is 6, and then 6 times 6 is 36 right there. So all of these are going to be 36. So if it's in centimeters, 36 cubic centimeters. If it's in inches, 36 cubic inches, and similarly in feet, 36 cubic feet right there. All right, which one's the biggest right here? Okay, so which prism would have the same size if, uh, which prism above, um, uh, I'm sorry, would the prisms above be the same size if they were built with centimeters, um, cubic centimeters, or inches, or, or feet? Okay, well, we, we just discussed that centimeters are smaller than inches, and a foot, since there's 12 uh, inches in a foot, a foot is the biggest right there, so so uh, the, the, it, they wouldn't be the same size at all. The prism with the centimeters would be the smallest, and if we built it in inches, it would be the larger than centimeters, but it would be smaller than the feet. The feet would be the largest right there. It would be much, much larger. Okay. So let's uh, find the volume of this, okay? So use the given unit right here, okay? So I think I pulled these off the homework questions here. So this is 6 times 2 times 3. So let's go ahead and do that. Length times width times height is 6 times 2 times 3. I'm going to multiply these two numbers first. 2 times 3 is 6, okay? And so in 6 times 6 is 36. So the volume is going to be 36 cubic feet, okay? All right, how about this guy right here? Okay, so the volume is going to be um, 5 times 4 times 3, and it's going to be in cubic inches. So 5 times 4 times 3, 
I like multiplying these two numbers first. 5 times 4 is 20. Okay, and that's a nice compatible number to work with right there. I know I know 2 times 6 is, is 12, so 20 times 6 is 12 with a 0, or 120 right there. Okay, so the volume is 120 cubic inches in this guy right here. All right, so compare the volumes, and we're going to write less than, greater than, or equal to. Okay, so let's find the volume of each, okay? So both, notice these are both in feet. If they weren't both in feet, you'd have to consider, I think there's one on there. They're the same numbers right here, but one's in centimeters and one's in inches. Remember, the inches are bigger than the than the centimeters, and the feet are bigger than the inches. So you just got to be aware of the of the units. This is in feet. This is in feet. So we just got to multiply. So 9 times 4 times 3. Let's go ahead and do that right there. All right, and then uh, let's see. So I did 4 times 3 first is 12, and then I'm going to show you another trick. I showed you in prior videos right there. 12 is the same as 10 plus 2. So if I rewrite it as 9 times 10 plus 2, 10 is a nice number to multiply because 9 times 10 is 90, and then 9 times 2 is, is 18. So we're left with 90 plus 18, or 108 cubic feet. Okay, let's do that with this guy right here. 8 times 5 times 2. Okay, so uh, I like thinking 5 times 2 is 10. Those are, man, 10 is a good number to multiply with. So 8 times 10 is 80. So which one's bigger, you guys? Clearly, uh, 108 is bigger than 80. So my, my greater than symbol is going to go that way right there. All right, all right, you guys. I hope this lesson makes sense and take care.